So for whatever reason, you find yourself in the market for a seven-seater car. Where maybe it's more kids, maybe you just need more space, maybe it's the dog, maybe you want a tow, maybe you camp a lot, God knows. But the first question you've got to ask yourself is, do you want a new car or do you buy a used car? And if you're looking at used cars, what are your options? Today, we're going to have a look at a 2017 Audi Q7 to see if maybe that's the way to go. If you're in the market for a used seven-seater car, there's quite a few to choose from. However, when you go to luxury seven-seater cars, the list is a little bit shorter. You have the Audi Q7, which I'm sat in today. You also have the BMW X5, if you can find one that has the extra two seats specified. You can get the BMW X7, still quite expensive, but out there with seven seats. You have the Land Rover Discovery, now in its third generation. If you've got deep enough pockets, you've got the Tesla Model X, um, if you can find one that's specified with seven seats. You've got the Volvo XC90, uh, and then you've also got the Mercedes GLS, generally with seven seats as well. So it's not a super long list, and then it just comes down to how much money you want to spend. Um, interestingly, the Audi Q7 was built with seven seats in mind. However, it was a no-cost option to have seats six and seven right at the back deleted. So make sure if you are looking at one that it does have all seven seats. Likewise, if you look at a hybrid version, the hybrid version also doesn't have seats six and seven on the back row because that's where the extra battery goes. So the Q7 I'm sat in today is a 2017 3 litre TDI Quattro and it's the 272 PS. There's two versions of the 3 litre diesel engine. There's the 272 PS and I think it's a 204 PS. So this one having just a bit more torque and a bit more top end but essentially um, they are built on the same engine. It's just a map slightly differently. This particular model also has a lot of extras. Uh, it actually has over £15,000 worth of extras fitted which is a good way for you to see the various options available on the used cars out there there because most of them seem to be in this car um, so I'll take you through them and you can see whether or not you think they're worthwhile so when you start off with an S-Line 3 litre TDI 272 PS the base price of this car was £56,405 in 2017 this particular car has black paint metallic black paint that was a £675 option and the wheels are upgraded to 21 inch alloys and they were a £1,350 option and then also you have Valcona leather throughout because a lot of them have Alcantara in the middle and leather on the surrounds. This is full leather, which is a £1,100 option. Internally, the car has a three-spoke flat-bottom leather multifunction sport steering wheel with shifter paddles just behind. That was a £150 option. It also has the advanced key. Um, I must admit, this is a great feature. What the advanced key gives you is the option to literally walk up and grab the handle, any four of any of the four handles, including the boot actually, so any of the five handles, providing the key is on you, then they will unlock all the car uh, and open. Also, as part of the advanced key pack, strangely, um, that also includes an electric luggage compartment cover. Because in your standard car, you do have to physically unclip it every time. Whereas in the cars, they've got the advanced key, as you can see in this one, when you open the boot, the luggage cover works its way up. So the advanced key is part of the comfort and sound pack, uh, which I will come back to as we add the other components. Next option to cover is the Audi Matrix LED headlights with LED rear lights and dynamic rear indicators. Now what that means is the LED headlights are designed specifically to allow you to stay on bright beam, so full beam, but when traffic's coming the other way, rather than just turn off completely, they will turn off just elements of the headlight that would dazzle the driver. So if they're coming down the middle, the headlights will stay on on either side of them to light the road up for you without dazzling that driver, which is pretty clever. That's a £950 option uh, at the time of specification. The dynamic rear indicators, by the way, look like this. You'll have probably seen them on quite a few Audis and Volkswagen, uh, other cars within the Volkswagen group now as well. Another element of the comfort and sound pack is the Bose 3D surround sound. Um, sound system here is incredible. You have 19 speakers, including 3D sound speaker, center speaker, and a subwoofer under the boot. As you can see, if you just lift the boot here, you can see the subwoofer is placed under there. There's a 15 channel amplifier with a total output of 558 watts. Uh, and there are speakers everywhere. 
um, right on the columns at the front, columns in the middle, in the roof at the back. You want sound, you'll get it in this car. There is plenty to hear. Next option are the door mirrors. They're electrically folding, adjustable and heated with a memory function. So they're linked in with the driver's seat memory function, which I'll talk about as the next option. And um, so what that means is you can flick the switch and the mirrors will fold in. You can set it so that when you lock the car, the mirrors fold in. And also you can set it so um, when you put the car in reverse, the wing mirror on the left hand side, so generally the curb side, will dip to make it easy for to see the curb and not curb your uh, expensive 21 inch alloys. Um, the door mirrors, the electric door mirrors are a 200 pound option. So next on the option list I mentioned then is the driver's side memory function for the electrically adjustable front seats. So both front seats have got multi-way adjustable uh, um, elements in them. So therefore you can go upwards, forwards, backwards and, and recline and everything and lumbar support. And you can also actually a nice feature, which I'll, I'll show you just now, is you can also adjust the length of the seat, um, which makes it much more comfortable as you're supported below your thighs. But crucially as well, it also includes the memory function. So how that works is you get the position of of the seat that you want and you press set and then you press one and that would store the memory um so the seat position for under basically user number one which also will associate with the key so if you tell it that one key is associated with that user then when you get in it will make sure the seat is in the position for you that's a 350 pound option next option is the heat and sound insulating glass with privacy glass. So this tints the windows in the back of the car. So as you can see, you've got a little bit more protection for both the children in the back perhaps, but also whatever's in your boot. Um, if you're not using the um, cover, then to be honest, it's quite difficult to see through anyway. But crucially also, it means you have double glazed glass in the front windows, um, which gives you a great advantage in terms of keeping any noise out and also just insulating you in terms of uh, the temperature. That, is a £525 option. So the next option is the rear view camera. So this is the final part of the comfort and sound pack. So just to refresh your memory, the comfort and sound pack consisted of the advanced key, the Bose 3D sound system and the rear view camera. And that as a pack is £1,795. So the rear view camera, very, very straightforward. As you can see on the screen there, literally you put it in reverse, turns on the camera at the back, but also you've got radar sensors at the front um, basically kind of covering everything except the exact side of you because it covers the angles to the front and to the rear but also to the front left front right back left back right next one is quite an important one it's definitely one that transforms the interior of the car and that's the technology pack now the technology pack retailed for £1,695 and includes some really desirable elements inside the Q7. First is the virtual cockpit, which Audi have become really synonymous for. They've, uh, they, they've basically launched this and then lots and lots of manufacturers have followed. But the virtual cockpit is fantastic. It's a 12.3 inch high resolution screen and it can show whatever information you need it to show, whether it's the maps, um, whether or not it is the uh, well-being of the car, uh, whether it's the radio, whether it's the telephone, whether or not there's any particular notifications, like if you're running out of fuel, then that will come up on there. Um, you also have a heads-up display within that. The heads-up display is a really, really useful feature. It shows you your current speed. Um, it also, as part of another pack, which I'll tell you about in a minute, it shows you what the speed limit is, which is both using the database of the sat-nav, but also cameras mounted just behind the uh, rear-view mirror that are looking out for street signs. So when it sees a street sign, it will react accordingly. But I'll show you that in a moment. But the heads-up display so will show you the speed you're doing, but also any sat-nav um, directions will come on there. So if you've got any, if it's telling you to turn left in 300 yards, then you'll have an arrow and 300 yards written on the screen. So you always know exactly where you're going without taking your eyes off the road at all. Um, the next one is the Audi phone box. Phone box is literally a wireless charging bed for your phone that goes in the centre console here. And it's just a mat that you sit your phone on and providing you have wireless charging. So the later iPhones and the later Android phones, then it will charge for you. The next pack this car has is a really long list, actually. This one is the Tour Pack Advanced. So this retailed for £2,655. So top of the list is the adaptive air suspension. Now, the air suspension is a fantastic feature on this car. Um, 
it has a number of benefits, not least of which when you choose different driving modes between, say, dynamic, which is a bit sportier, or if you're going to it's purely for comfort, then it will vary the height of the car. If you're going off-road and you put it into all-road or off-road mode, it will raise up to either four or five out of the five um, height options that it's got, which gives you a bit more ground clearance. Um, the other advantage of it is that it also increases the capacity of the car to tow. Um, now, I'll get to the towing pack in a moment, but what it means is that the I think the standard towing rate of this car is 2,800 kilos, so it's a lot. But by adding air suspension, it jumps up to 3,500 kilos that it can tow. So obviously it's a very competent car if you're towing a caravan, a trailer, a horse box, or whatever you need, or maybe a boat. Um, next thing as part of the Tour Pack Advance is the Advanced Cruise Control with Stop and Go and Traffic Jam Assist. This functionality is fantastic. Um, if you haven't had a car with cruise control, uh, adaptive cruise control, then, then you should definitely try it. The logic of it is very straightforward. Basically, when you turn it on, you set the speed that you want the car to travel at, and you also set the distance you want it to maintain from the car in front. And what it will do is it will go the faster of those two speeds. So if there's nobody in front and you set 40, then the car will maintain 40 miles an hour. What this particular car does as well, using the sat-nav, is it knows when there's a corner or a roundabout coming up and it slows your speed accordingly, so it doesn't you don't hit the corner at 40 miles an hour. It reacts ready. Um, but the interesting thing that it said is also the distance from the car in front so if it's traveling at 40 and then a car pulls out in front doing 35 then your car will maintain the distance you've specified and drop your speed down to 35 miles an hour to ensure you don't hit the back of them but you maintain a safe distance you can vary the distance from the car in front anywhere between one and i think four bars uh or maybe even five but three is a comfy uh is a comfy medium and also that's the default so obviously it's one that audi are happy with the option you've got here though um is as part of another pack this particular car has, it's actually part of this pack, think about it actually, is camera-based traffic sign recognition. So as I mentioned before, the car can read the traffic signs and see if there's any speed limits. So therefore, if you set the car to travel at, say, 70 miles an hour as your cruise control, then it will drive along at 70. But if you pass a sign that says 50, the car will see it and will lower your, your cruise control speed to 50 and then gently bring you down to 50 relatively quickly but not enough to kind of jolt you it's just obviously once you're into that zone you should be doing 50. by law you should have got to 50 before you get to it so that may you maybe have to um, manually override it but the car should you not will bring you down to that speed likewise when you come out of the 50 and back into the 70 with the national speed limit sign it will work its way back up to 70. It's very, very cool. I really like it. Um, collision avoidance assistant. So what this does is um, supports the driver's actions during an avoidance maneuver, reducing the likelihood of a collision or swerving off the road. So if you have to turn around something, the car will help you do it. Um, predictive efficiency assistant. So this is where the car uses navigation data, speed limits, traffic signs, um, road bends, junctions and roundabouts to give the driver efficient advice in the uh, instrument cluster. So that's quite useful actually. I don't always pay attention to it, but it is useful. Uh, next one is pre-sense front. Now the car, all the cars as standard have an element of this, but I think only up to about 19 miles an hour. As part of the tour pack, the pre-sense front works right the way up to 155 miles an hour. So what it's doing is it's looking around constantly. And if it sees a challenge or a problem, or maybe somebody stopping or even a person, not at 155 miles, miles an hour admittedly, but if it sees a person and doesn't think you're reacting, it will react and stop the car in time to try and reduce the likelihood of you having an accident. Another one is turn assist. When turning at junctions, from the moment the turn indicators are activated, the turn assist will look for vehicles around you. So if you indicate to turn right, for example, in the, in the UK, so you're turning right across the other carriageway, and the car sees that there's another car coming, it won't let you go. Um, so it won't move until it knows it's not going to get hit, um, which is good. And last but not least, but really cool, um, is active lane assist. Now this does exactly what it sounds like. Using those cameras and the sensors on the car, the car will look for white lines or curbs wherever it can to try and ascertain where the road lanes are. So lane assist, when you turn it on, which is just by pressing a button on the end of the top stalk here on the left, what that does is it starts the cameras and you'll see two gray lines appear both on the dashboard and in your heads up display. When they go green, that means the car can see the lane. So it will then essentially do its best to try and stay in the middle of the lane. Um, you still have to have your hands on the wheel, such is the law in the UK. 
Um, but essentially, it will have a good go at guiding you. And if you don't grip the wheel, but you've just got your hands on it, it will. you can feel that it will turn. And it will take you around bends without any issue at all. Um, it's a very capable system. But make no mistake, it's not Tesla's autopilot. It doesn't have that level of efficiency. It doesn't read traffic lights. It doesn't recognize other cars. It doesn't see traffic cones like you see in all the Tesla uh, videos. It just looks for lanes. And on A roads, it sometimes finds them. On dual carriageways or motorways, it always finds them. And it's an absolute joy to drive. If you can turn on lane assist and turn the adaptive cruise control on the motorway, you will have a very happy, comfortable journey. You won't break the speed limit. You won't get too car too close to the car in front. And you don't have to get too stressed with the guards' lane changes. It will just do the work for you. It's a brilliant cruising car. Um, so like I said, the uh, Tour Pack Advance, that was 2,655 and encompassed all those items. The next one is the Trailer Pack. Um, they're quite rare on the Q7s uh, in the UK, um, but this is a £1,300 option. And what that gives you is an electrically operated tow bar. So you do that by pressing this button in the boot. Um, you've got four buttons in the boot, which I'll take you through shortly. But by pressing the tow bar button, underneath the bottom of the car, a tow bar emerges, comes out a bit of an angle and then locks into place. As I said, if you've got the air suspension, it can then tow 3,500 uh, kilograms of trailer of some kind. Um, you've got your 13-pin socket on the side. The other function for your £1,300 trailer pack is the trailer assist. Now, you've got a button here on the dashboard, which is also used if the car has self-parking, which this particular car doesn't. Um, with the cameras at the rear, I'm not entirely sure it's necessary, but when you press this button and you have a trailer attached to the back, what the car will do is allow you to steer by turning this dial here and it will steer in the direction you want. So you don't have to worry about jackknifing. It's very easy when you reverse a trailer to judge it wrong and have the trailer and the car come at each other. What this system does is you tell it where it wants to go and it will do the steering to make sure the trailer goes in the direction you want. Um, also on this car is an 85 litre fuel tank um, upgrade. So it's a slightly bigger tank. That was a no cost option. S-Line pack we've talked about. And the last pack is the Style pack. So the Style pack has extended LED interior lighting, so multicolored. So that means that on this menu here, you can choose what color you want the various LED strips around the car to be. Um, you can actually change it based on the mode you're in. So on the drive select mode, you can have it so they go red if you're on, if you're in dynamic, or green if you're in eco. Um, so it's quite cool in that sense. But the other option on it, and it's a really cool option, is this one. And that's the panoramic glass sunroof. So this comprises of two glass sections and a blind that will come over and cover the entire, um, the entire roof if you want. You can put this front half tilted up or you can open it where it sits on top of the back half. So you've got a nice big open space here uh, and so the glass goes outside of the car. And the final component of the style pack is the foot rails that run along the length of the car to help you get in and out. Plus they add a kind of cool rugged look to the car. So when you combine all the options on this particular car, when this was new, before the on-the-road cost, this was £71,350. So now it's four years old, you can expect to pay about half that, which means somebody else has taken the hit for that £35,000, £36,000. So that raises the question, is this the way to go? Let's have a look around the car. Okay, now the rain stopped, I'll take you around the exterior of the car. So the Q7 is physically quite a large car. It's just over five meters long, just under two meters wide, about 1.7 meters tall. Um, it has a definitive Audi grille. So it has does have a big grille at the front there. You've got the matrix LED lights that you've seen before. This being an S line, it's got a slightly sportier bumper at the bottom and you've got your radar and your um, little sensors there for uh, the parking uh, as well. If you come around the side here, so you've got the 21 inch uh, upgraded alloys on this particular model. Um, if you don't have the upgraded ones, I think the S-Line has standard 20 inch and the SE has standard 19 inch wheels anyway, so it looks the part. Uh, up top, you've got the silver rails, roof rails, which you can put um, roof bars on, which look great. And then you've got the steps down the side there, around the back. It's got a real strong presence, and obviously part of that is the uh, is the shape, because obviously the shape, it's all about practicality inside. You need to have that roof line to be able to get seven seats in. Uh, round the back, again, you've got kind of an S-line bumper at the bottom, a little bit sportier looking. Uh, and I must admit, I really like the angle from the back. I think it's a good looking car. Um, single windscreen wiper at the back, nice little spoiler. And then round this side, you have your fuel cap. 
So your view from the driver's seat is really, really commanding because you're in a four by four and you've got that extra height. You really do have a great view out there and you can see everything that's going on around you. Uh, in terms of the actual functionality of the cabin, uh, obviously you've got the steering wheel that went through before. This one having the flat bottom, but regular, just the uh, round at the bottom. Uh, over on the right here, you have your window controls. So you've got parental controls, which can, the when you press that, for example, that will turn off both the window and the locking of the door at the back left, and obviously same with the back right. So you've got real security about what can uh, what's happening with the kids. Uh, up here, you've got your lock and unlock, and obviously handle to open the door. Really nice Alcantara finish. It's very luxurious. Every single surface in here is soft. It's uh, You can feel the quality on it. Um, obviously, you've got the memory seat button and this option in this car. Um, up here, this little red light just flashes, let you know when the alarm's on. Down here, your light controls. Generally, you would leave it in auto, and the car will do its thing. It's got sensors um, behind the uh, wing mirror, the sorry, the rearview mirror. They pay attention to whether or not it's dark enough to warrant the lights going on, and then they just come on. This car also, because it's got the heads-up display, you've got the option here to be able to move the display up and down, uh, and also turn it on and off if you prefer. And obviously, your fog lights are there as well. Various vents throughout the car, um, so you can control where the air is going, and also it includes this this one here, which this one doesn't move. This is a fixed vent, and this is called, I think it's the air curtain, I think we call it. And that just keeps fresh air moving around the cabin, which is which is great. Um, so your controls on here, you've got the various controls for whatever's happening on the screen in front of you, which I power up now. We'll have a look at that. So when you first start the car, you've got the windows that open up. Um, sorry, the wing mirrors that open up just to uh, let you know it's awake. And then if I go to, uh, let's put the maps on there. So it's just initializing when you first turn it on. So let's give it a second to catch up. But down here, you said you've got the controls to be able to change the view that you've got in front of you. This one on, this, uh, on the digital dash allows the clocks to go bigger and smaller. Um, that's the nav waking up. And then you've also got just to go through the options. So you can either, if you're on the map, then it'll zoom in and out. Uh, and then obviously just left and right over here that repeats the last navigation um, command that was given and you can control the stereo there with the volume and the next track if you've got a CD or a jukebox playing or it's going through the jukebox being a 20 gig hard drive that's in the car which is quite good so you can download music from USB or SD card and then that's the start and end phone calls and that one if you hold your finger on it will activate the uh, either Siri if you have your phone connected or Google if you've got your Android phone connected uh, or if you just touch it, then it operates uh, Audi's um, voice system, which is uh, which is okay. It's not as good as Siri or Google, but it's not bad. And then over there, I said you've got the heads-up display, um, which, uh, uh, which you saw on the options earlier. Down the middle here with the controls, so drive select allows you to choose which mode the car is in. So if I put that on there so you can either scroll up and down with the buttons and that will chew it will change various elements if you see that bottom right where you've got the little flashing there that's the air suspension so when you put it in dynamic for example it drops down to two bars so the whole car is dropping around me right now Get rid of that fuel reminder um, whereas if you put it up to all road just by pushing this button down here or even lift all road then it'll take you all the way up to five and again I can feel the car is rising in front of me um, so that's what the drive select button does. I'll put it back down to auto. Um, this turns your auto start stop off. This is traction control. These are just your warning lights. This button you saw earlier with regards to the uh, tow assist, if you had the parking pack, that button would also do that. So when you're pulling up alongside uh, parking spaces, you push that and the car will look to see if the space is big enough for itself and then it'll back in. I've had that in a previous Audi and I must admit, in the three years I owned that car, I think I probably used it five times, mostly just to show other people. Um, it works, but it parks your car such a distance from the curb um, to protect the alloys that on a car this wide, that can actually mean you're sticking out at the other side. So I wasn't that bothered that uh, that this car doesn't have it. Um, this turns on your reverse camera. So when you push that, the camera is activated up there. And then next one on here is Hill Assist. Um, we've never used this because I must admit, this isn't a car that goes off road very often. When you push that, um, if you're going down a really steep hill, then you let go of the brake and the accelerator and the car will control the speed. And all you've got to do is steer. Um, so it's just about keeping it safe. And then this one, Push the screen away if you're not uh, using it, or if you prefer to just have a clear dash, um, because obviously you have the screen in front of you if you like, you don't really need that up. Um, so sometimes, I must admit, uh, I think it looks quite good with it now. Down below here, you have the, um, so it's, essentially it's an ashtray, never been using an ashtray in this car, so it's just got parking money in it, uh, and a 12 volt socket. Um, you've got the controls here for the MMI, which is the, let's put that back up, which is the controls up here. So when you get to menu, you can go through 
everything from uh, Audi Connect and your smartphone interface because this does have um, Audi CarPlay and Android Auto but you do have to physically plug it in uh, it's not a wireless option it does have to be done um, with the plug but yeah so the MMI controls everything and you've got a touch sensitive thing on there so you can actually write your destinations on there if it's easier for you um, get a stick down there dead easy button on the side then slide it that way for drive that way for reverse and then P for park when you're done back to your handbrake um, generally put it on when you arrive but when you're leaving you can just set off and the car will automatically disengage it anyway and then auto hold which is a brilliant function really straightforward if you've ever had an automatic you'll recognize the importance of auto hold if i put my start the car put my foot on the brake and put it into d i can then let go of the brake completely so i've got no feet on either of the pedals uh, and the auto hold means that the car doesn't roll anywhere it just stays here and then here is your volume control for the stereo uh, and also you can push it to the side and back to change the station or move on to the next track if you're listening to music of your choice in the middle there, you've got the um, air conditioning control system. So this is an S-line, so therefore it has the four zone. Um, so each of the front passengers can choose their own temperature. Both got heated seats. And obviously you've got blower at the top, you've got air circulation change, and you've got your rear uh, heater. So let's turn that back off. And then the middle here, these are touch sensitive until you choose to actually push them hard and activate them. So you can see your options there are sync, force, full zone or set rear. So if I push down to set rear, then you see it says rear in the middle and also you've got the controls here. So then I can change what the temperature is in the back right. And over here, I can change what the temperature is in the back left. So all four passengers can have exactly the temperature that suits them best. Or you can put it into sync mode, in which case whatever this front right one does, all four corners of the car will do. Um, obviously you can turn it off and then eco mode just allows you to uh, use a little bit less fuel so it just makes it a bit more efficient. Um, if you want you can manually change where the air is blowing and how fast the fan is but I always tend to leave it on auto and let the car do the work. Uh, coming down the middle here you've just got a little bit of storage space um, also if the car don't won't start because it can't see the key maybe you've left it in the door and the door's open then you just have to touch the key there a little symbol that just tells the car that uh, the key is in the car um, it won't do anything without the key uh, likewise uh, if you leave the keys in and then try and lock the car from the outside it won't let you so it's quite clever center armrest um, two independent bits that you can push it out so the passenger and the driver can get it where they want it and you can put it to click it up to different heights and it will stay uh, alternatively um, you can open up and you've got a bit of storage space you've got the charging pad that we saw earlier and this is the cable I use to plug into my iPhone to activate the CarPlay so then my phone is in there and out of the way over on the passenger side you've got a nice big glove box uh, mine's full of uh, antibacterial things <laughs> at the moment this being the time it is and then big door pockets in each of the doors as well uh, including in the rear you can get a big bottle in the back as well in the back they do have um, strangely there are little spaces that i suppose historically you would call an ashtray but they're just a hand little storage thing that generally kids will fill up with rubbish and then also back here you've got net storage on the back of each of the seats and as i said the four zone climate control does extend all the way to the back of the car so if i power that back up again you can see the controls are back here, so it's dead easy for your passengers in the back to be able to vary their own temperatures. So there's no more arguments with the children um, wanting different temperatures in the back and then fighting over it. They can just choose their own, which is superb. So continuing from in the back of the car, as I said, you've got the heating controls, but below that you've got two 12 volt sockets. Um, this one's just got the cover in, and then this one's got a dual USB adapter in, which is quite handy. Um, that's mine, I just put it in there. As I said, you've got the net in, but the, the other thing that's quite important back here is, of course, you have the view. The view through that panoramic sunroof is just superb and goes right the way from front to back, so you can see everything. The seats in the back are really, really spacious as well. Because you've got such a wide car, it means you have three standalone seats, and all three of them have got Isofix fittings, so literally you just pull this off here, even the middle one, and then your clips are underneath as does the passenger seat and both seats in the back so you could you could genuinely clip in six children's seats in here which is um which is fantastic i've got to admit it's quite quite an impressive feature um obviously you've got seat belts right the way through including in the back which i will show you shortly and all of these seats are adjustable so they all slide forwards and backwards using a bar underneath much like you'd have in the front of a car 
So it means if you need a little bit more room behind for the passengers in the very back, then you can, and you've still got plenty of leg room at the front. Um, I'm just just under six foot tall, and I can sit there quite comfortable with an inch in front of my knees. Uh, and you've also got the option there to recline these seats. So if I look at this middle one, middle one has a little pull here, whereas the um, outside ones have got a handle on the side. Just give it a pull and then push the seat back. And so you can recline and get a bit more comfortable for those journeys, which is great. Uh, it's just a comfortable place to be. Definitely for five adults. Um, six and seven, the back seats. As I said, I probably wouldn't put an adult there for too long because the leg room is a little restricted and your knees are a little high. But for children, it's fantastic. Um, you've got a centre armrest. Bring this down here, you've got some cup holders. Um, being Audi, they're nice and smart and clever. Crucially, you can put them away. I find it quite irritating when you get these armrests that have got cup holders there, and so you have to put your elbow in them. Um, and pop that back up. And if you need access to the boot, then if you pull this recline um, cable and then just move out of the way, it will pop forward and locks into place to give you direct through access to the boot. So I'm moving out of the car to illustrate how you access the uh, seats six and seven. So, so I've moved the seats all the way forward, but I said it's just a case of grabbing the handle and slide the number forwards and backwards, um, and they move quite easily. Uh, as I said, and you've still got plenty of room in there. But what you would do then is these are the handles for reclining, or you move the seats forward like that. So if I put these middle two forward to give you an idea of what it looks like. So, so that's the space you've got. And then you've got three sets of controls to be able to raise the rear seats. You've got one set here, You've got the matching set on the other side behind that seat, you can just about see the red lights. And then you've got the set back there, which is on the controls that also bring up the tow bar. What you will see, of course, is in between, you have this, which is the um, boot cover. So the Tony cover, if you will. So you need to get this out of the way first. So you have to move that manually. So if you go around the back. And open the car. So because this is the electric one, it slides up, it's got rails at the side here, so you just got to slide it down the rails manually, and then it will clip itself back there. Little release here, and then this just lifts out of the way. Um, now there isn't anywhere to store it, so you do need to make sure you leave um, this at home if you're planning on having passengers in every seat. So, back to here, let's go around the side. So really, really straightforward. I said it's, this is a, a nice luxury car, and you can see this in details like this. So all you do, you want the seats up, we'll push both buttons, you just push the buttons, and up the seats go. There you go, just takes a second. And then when you want, when you want to get in, then you've got this seat that's in front of you, and it's just a case of where it says push there, you push in, handle appears, grab it, pull it up, and when it gets about halfway, uh, it's actually on pneumatic strut, so that takes the rest of the weight. So not too difficult to step in. And then once you're in, pop your headrest up, just clips into place. And then all you've got to do here is just pull this seat back down. It's got a handy little handle there. Make sure your feet aren't underneath it. You've got lots of space underneath for your feet, so you've got that, but as you can see, it's quite a high floor, so you do have quite a gap below your knees. So you just pull this up into place. You get that level with the rest. So when you sat behind, said so you've not got lots of knee room, but you've got enough for a short journey, or a smaller child will find this perfectly comfortable. And the great thing is, it's not like you get a third class journey back here. Back here, you still have the full, beautiful leather seats. In fact, these are probably the nicest leather seats in the car because they get used the least. <laughs> but from a seatbelt point of view as well, these are stored here when you're not using them. And what you do is you pull this down and you've got two clips. So the first clip, you would just slot into that there. Which that's do. And then the middle one is just the traditional seatbelt that you're used to that comes across. So you've got the same level of protection you have in any other seat. So it's a really simple setup, but it's a nice, comfortable place to be with your own unique reading lights and yet more Bose speakers. So you can definitely hear the music back here. And with the rear seats up, you do actually still have a relatively decent sized boot. That's the kind of boot you'd get in maybe a Volkswagen Polo. So you're not really short of space still, which is which is great. You're probably not going to get seven people's worth of luggage in, but you'll certainly get your shopping in in a couple of bags. So to just to touch on this control panel here, because obviously you saw it earlier with regards to the uh, tow bar, and you've seen that it has the seat options, and there's your hook for your takeaway or your shopping, but also you've got this button in between. If you push this one, what it does is it lowers the whole car. 
So if you've got something that you want to load in the back and it's a little heavy, then it brings the car down as low as possible to make it easy for you to load, which is a great feature, but again, it's only on the cars with air suspension. So when you look in the back of a Q7, if you've got all four buttons, you know it's got the tow pack or at least a tow bar, and you know it's got air suspension. But back to these rear seats. So got the buttons back here. So when you want to put them away, it's the same process as getting them out. We'll just push the bottom of the buttons, hold your fingers on them, headrest pop down at a certain point, and you're done. And at this point, I've left the middle seats down just to illustrate that this is such a versatile car because if you need space to transport things, that is a huge amount of room to be able to transport wardrobes. Um, if you're helping anybody move like I did at the weekend with my sister, then this is a fantastic space to help you do that. So having established that the car clearly has lots of space, lots of luxury, lots of fantastic components, what's it like on the road? Um, it's actually, it's a combination of cars really. First and foremost, um, it feels like a big car. There's no two ways about it. Um, but the plus side of that is your view. I mean, the view you have out the windscreen is very commanding because you're higher than most cars and you can see everything that's going on around you, which is fantastic to be fair. I love that extra visibility uh, that you get from an SUV style. Um, a 4x4 car. Um, over and above that, um, it can feel quite sporty. Uh, if you put it in dynamic mode and it drops the suspension down, um, the car will grip wonderfully on corners. I mean, I'm just gonna go around this roundabout here. Uh, and if I, you know, that's clear run. If I just put my foot down a little bit, the car just doesn't lean at all. Um, oh, this car's going all the way around. It just doesn't lean at all. It gives you a nice, smooth journey at all times, and that's partly the uh, the air suspension because it's counterbalancing as you're going around corners. Um, so as we find ourselves on this road here, this is a 40 mile an hour road, so if I pull the adaptive cruise control, which is here, so I pull it and then I press the button to turn it on, put it up to 40 miles per hour, which it's reading through the cameras uh, behind this mirror here that it's 40 anyway to confirm. And now I can let go of the um, brake and accelerator, so I'm not touching them at all now, and the car is braking nice and smooth behind the car in front. And then when it's ready, the car will set off again. I'm not accelerating, and the car is gently pulling out um, to follow that car in front. And there we go. Now if I turn the lane assist on as well, what you'll see is that the car will try and look to see if it can recognize the middle or the edge or the side of the road. So it'll look for the white lines, it'll look for the curb on that side. It doesn't always find them, but on this occasion it has. Um, see the symbol's gone green down here, if you can see the dashboard, uh, which means I can now, I mean, you shouldn't obviously completely let go of everything, but the car is steering. So all I need to do is put my hands on the wheel just to guide it and let it know that I'm still here. But essentially it's in control of the steering, which is super clever. So when you do need the car to perform, there's definitely more than enough power behind it. So if I put my foot down a little bit now, you can hear it drops the gears and pulls away nice and quickly and easily. There's plenty of torque. Um, so as I've said earlier in the video with regards to the tow pack, this car's capable of towing th three and a half tons with the air suspension. So therefore it has to have a lot of power and torque behind it. And it just makes it for a smooth, easy drive. As you're driving along, the revs very rarely get above <laughs> 2000 rpm so the gearbox is an eight speed gearbox so it got up to maybe 1.8 and then up to the fifth gear and now it's getting up to about 1.8 again and it's into sixth gear so it's constantly trying to keep itself as efficient as possible and the engine just doesn't have to work very hard that's the advantage of a three liter is that you've got the power there for it to be able to pretty much do anything it needs to do um, if you do go into sport mode on this, if you want to, you can move it two options. You can either go sport by putting your hand on the gearbox and sense, but bring it towards you once. And you'll see on my dashboard, I've gone from a D6 to S6, so it's now in sports mode. That means it'll hold on the revs a bit higher. So now it'll go above 2,000 RPM before, it'll go to 2,500 RPM before changing gear. So I'll put it back into drive, so it goes into a more efficient gear. And if you want to drive it manually, you can push the gears off to the side and now you can change gears by doing that manually up and down. So we're down to fourth, up to fifth, or you can use the paddles here. And the car is telling me that it thinks I should change up gear as well. So it's still trying to be efficient. But as we approach this junction, put my indicators on and I can manually bring the car down. If you want to get it back into automatic, just wait a few seconds, it'll do it automatically. Or 
just push that back over into D and you're good to go. You don't need to put that into manual for, for the uh, paddles to work, by the way. If you press the paddles at any point, it automatically puts it into manual mode um, and takes control from there. So the last question has to be really, would I recommend this as a used seven-seater bargain? Um, absolutely. Um, so much so that in case you hadn't already guessed, this is my car. Uh, I liked it so much that I bought it. Um, it's been so brilliantly useful. Uh, so I've been able to take my children out and they can each bring a friend. Um, when I've had to move people, so to help my sister move at the weekend, it was fantastic. If you just want to go out and drive by yourself, it's a nice driver's car. It's nice and engaging. But beyond that, just cruising. Just for everyday use, it's just a comfortable, comfortable car with loads of luxurious little features in it. Um, would I pay for all those extras if I was buying the car new? Um, first, I'm not sure I'd pay nearly £72,000 once you include it on the road. I'm not sure I'd pay £72,000 for it. But paying half that, absolutely, it's a bargain. Um, the tour pack with the adaptive cruise and everything is fantastic. The tech pack was a must for me. I really, really had to have the digital dash and the heads-up display is superb. Um, the extras, I mean, the style pack was really important for me. I really wanted the glass screen. I think that's really, really good addition. The little bonuses, the flat screen, flat bottom steering wheel, I could take a leave, I'm not too concerned about it. But the um, Xenon, sorry, the uh, Matrix LED headlights um, are fantastic. Are they worth 950 pounds? I'm not sure I think they are, but are they worth buying a car that has them? Absolutely, they're a brilliant, brilliant feature. Do not have to think about um, the lights when you're out and about on a country road where there's no street lights, but crucially, it's just so bright, but without dazzling people. Everything about it is just superb. Um, so there's lots and lots of features that I thought um, really sold this car. Um, so yeah, absolutely, I would recommend the Q7 as a fantastic used seven-seater family luxury car bargain. So finally, thanks for watching. Um, this is the first of my kind of properly edited videos that I've put on this channel, and I do plan for more. Uh, my aim is basically to reflect the kind of things that interest me and men in my age group. So I'm a mid 40s British bloke, uh, and so I'll cover things like cars, gadgets, um, probably some camping in there, because we like camping as a family, as do lots of families, particularly following the lockdown. Um, and if there's other things you'd like to see, I'd love to hear from you. If you can put it in the comments below the kind of videos that you'd like to see, then I'd be delighted to have a go at making them. And plus, of course, it'd be great to see what you think of this one. Um, obviously, for you to see these videos, you need to subscribe. So I would really appreciate it if you did. Um, not every video is gonna be for your cup of tea. I mean, maybe you're not into gadgets, but you're into cars. Maybe you're into cars, not into gadgets. But there should hopefully be something for everybody. Um, so please do subscribe. It really means a lot, and it lets me know that I'm doing the right thing. Uh, and obviously, obviously, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and a like um thanks for watching hope to see you in the next video and uh, you stay safe out there bye bye